Hey guys, my name is Will and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use cameras in After Effects. So getting straight into the tutorial guys, just before we start, I'm going to be using the phone model that I've been using in a lot of my projects recently just to demonstrate how cameras work. What I am going to do is just hide all these layers so that we can just see the one layer. If you are interested in using this phone model in your own work, I've left a link in the description to my Patreon page where you can get exclusive access to my project file. So to create a new camera, we're going to right click down here, come to new, go to camera, and you're going to see this big interface about a camera. Now honestly, don't worry about zoom, angle of view, film size and focal length. They're very advanced properties and changing these can often distort how your composition looks. We've got two types of cameras, we've got a one node camera and we've got a two node camera. A one node camera means you can only control the position of the camera from this point, whereas a two node camera you can control where the position is as well as the point of interest. So you can effectively control where it looks and you can control where we see it from. If we come to one node camera, honestly camera name's fine, uh, name it what you like. Preset, I use 50mm, that's what I'm going to be using in this tutorial. Uh, have an experiment, basically the longer this is, the longer the camera will be, and you can see the, the effects for yourself. So, millimeters is fine, measure film size diagonally is fine, click OK. So if we now bring this to two views here, we can see that we've got our camera now in the scene. So, to control this camera, if we rotate this right now, we can see that it's just going to pan it from the one point. This is where we are, this is where we're looking from. As it's a one node camera, we can only control this one point. If we come to here and make this a two node camera, I'll show you. So now we get this point of interest value where we can control, as you can see here, we can control this point here. So if we control this and we, we can position this, this value around, bring it left to right, and we can also change this value and the position value as well, which is gonna be the position of the actual camera itself. I personally prefer one node cameras, but we use it with a null, and I'll show you how this works in a minute. So if we bring this all back to normal values, set this to minus 3000, it really doesn't matter, and we'll just rotate that back to zero. So if we create a new null, new null object, and then make this 3D, and parent our camera 1 to our null 6, or this, this new null, right? I'm going to rename this camera control, and now if we rotate this point, we can pivot it or orbit it around this, this null object, right? Now what you'll notice is if we're rotating it on the, this is the Y axis here, and then we start to rotate it on the X axis, we'll see the camera starts to turn in this weird way and it just doesn't look quite right. So what we'll do is set, this, set these both to zero, make sure that all your values are exactly how, as they came, and you're going to create a new null object, call this one, I like to call it camera zero. Now if we take camera control and obviously make this camera zero uh, 3D, if we take camera control and parent that to camera zero, what we're then going to see is that if we rotate the camera zero on the Y axis and then we control the camera control, we're not going to get this weird, this weird turning anymore. I know it looks really distorted from this view, but from this view we're not getting that weird turning. Okay? There we go, that's better, that's a better view. Basically, camera control is going to be controlling our x-axis. You could even rename this x like that, and camera zero, rename this one y. Because on the camera zero, you only want to be changing, if I stop using orientation, the y rotation for this one, and then camera control, the x rotation. So now if you start keyframing these, we're not going to get that weird turning that we get when we just use one knot. So in terms of actually keyframing this thing, we could rotate the camera as well as rotating our phone and it's going to create these complex movements that would be very hard to recreate by just keyframing a phone. This is where cameras come to come to your advantage in After Effects. Um, I'm, I've got the properties here that I want to be animating and I'm just going to lay out some keyframes to start with. So I'm going to go to Y1, then I'm going to, or Y0, sorry, then I'm going to set that to 10 and then I'm going to move it across, bring it to 0, because that's just going to give it this, if we look here, it's going to give that ever so subtle little dash to the side. Uh, in terms of the X, I'm going to go 30, or in the middle 30, sorry. Then I'm going to bring it back to zero. Then on position, I'm going to go... So when you want to control how close the camera is, you can control the position of the camera, and that's the position of this point compared to the null. So if our thing is minus 3,000, we're going to say minus 3,000, then we come to minus 2,000, we're saying it want, we want it to get minus 2,000 in relation to the null. So there are 2,000 pixels, I think it is, or 2,000 sort of digits there in between the null and our camera, right? We're going to bring this back to 3,000 afterwards. 
and then we're going to go phone body let's try something interesting here let's go minus 180 let's try this and then we go to zero and then we'll rotate it back to 180 so it's a full turn now in terms of actually easing this we're going to select these top three that's what i'm going to do anyway and just select these and drag these so it's slow in the middle this is just going to create that nice because i know that these these are properties i've keyframed them so that they bounce back so they go sort of back to where they came from they don't follow through now if we watch this we can see this right now now obviously we we have keyframed our phone but it's a very linear movement so what we want to do is we're going to select our phone we're going to do the same thing but what this time we're going to do is a little bit different so we're going to double click this point in the middle set continuous and i'm going to set this to about 50 this number here and what that's going to do is lift this up this means that it's going to carry on moving on that rotation so it's not going to stop and this is what i mean you can create these sort of complex movements that you wouldn't be able to create as easily if you hadn't have used a camera so this is where cameras come to an advantage and this could be you know this could be an opening to a phone promotional video right and we could even loop this if we just drag the the work area down to two we can watch it loop so if i just watch it like this you can just see it looping right and this could be the opening to a phone promotion or you could have your ui on the phone for example or whatever you guys are using or demonstrating your cameras on this is what i mean so it's fairly straightforward to do but yeah i hope you learned something new to download the project file you can check out my patreon and as always thanks for watching